Okay, morning all. Welcome to another bit of CUDA. Uh, okay, in this video we're going to be looking at transforms. So there's a whole lot of these, and the logic behind them is not particularly difficult. It's just the, uh, the syntax can be a little fiddly. Uh, so we'll pretty much just scream through a whole bunch of them. Uh, something like 20, or yeah, something like that. And uh, at the end, we'll have a bit of a look at an example of, uh, or a few examples, um, an easy one, an intermediate one, and, and one that's a bit more difficult. Um, okay, so the transforms allow us to do operations on each item in a device or host vector. So if you want to negate elements of a vector, for instance, or maybe you want to multiply corresponding elements of two vectors, uh, storing the result in another, yeah, that sort of thing. So they're just basic operations on the elements of vectors. Uh, we're going to have a look first of all at four standard transforms and then we'll move on to uh, a bunch of basic uh, operators that uh, Thrust provides for us. Okay, just before we get started, a few little things to note. This may or may not come up, but um, the parameters in transforms should be from the same memory space. So you shouldn't you know, try and multiply a device vector by uh, elements in a host vector or vice versa. Uh, you want to multiply or transform you know, two device vectors together, or two host vectors. Okay, I hope that makes sense. And uh, the memory should already be allocated is another thing to be aware of. So these aren't memory uh, allocation or memory management functions. Um, Thrust is just going to assume that the uh, vectors that you're using for the transforms have the right number of items in them. Uh, usually that means that the vectors will have the same number of items. Uh, and the other thing, I don't even know if this makes any sense, but uh, it it doesn't make sense to uh, begin in one vector and end in a different vector. <laughs> I hope that means something to you. You know, if you've got to supply a begin and an end for the range of some transform, it doesn't make sense to have them from two different vectors. Okay, but on to the transforms themselves. Okay, so the first one, and one of the most simple, is just um, fill, it's called. So your uh, header is thrust fill. And uh, all this is going to do is uh, set the values, set every element from the uh, beginning to the end uh, iterators with some specified value. So zero in this instance just here. Yeah, nice and simple. Okay, the next one is sequence. And uh, I think we might have seen this last time, but um, sequence uh, actually generates you know, numerical or, or items in a numerical order. So something like um, thrust sequence a.begin a.end. Uh, with no other parameters, is going to generate the default sequence, which is um, just counting up in integers from uh, 0. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm sure you're familiar with the pattern. Uh, but if you want a bit more flexib flexibility, this is pretty cool. You can provide a uh, starting value and a step. So uh, thrust sequence a.begin and a.end is going to generate um, you know, an integer, or assuming that that is actually an integer vector, uh, for each of the elements in that range, uh, but the first parameter here I've provided after those iterators is uh, the starting point, so 10 in this instance, and uh, I want it to step in fives. Uh, so that's actually going to count up in multiples of five starting from 10. Yeah, so A0 will become 10, uh, A1 will be 15, then uh, 20, 25, etc, etc. Okay, that's thrust sequence. Uh, okay, replace. I've changed my font from uh, Courier for some reason. <laughs> uh, replace is pretty easy as well. All it's going to do is uh, search all of the elements in your range. So a.begin to a.end. Um, that's my, my range. Uh, it's going to replace all of the fives that it finds with 100. Yeah, it's as easy as that. Uh, okay, so this one's a little bit weird. There are more of these... Um, standard transformations I believe other than just um, other than these four that we've been through but adjacent difference you might want to use uh, this actually subtracts um, the previous item from the current item yeah so for each item in the uh, in the range d dot begin to d dot end uh, it's going to subtract the uh, previous item from the current one and it's a little bit strange but it it assumes that the um, you know, the item before the first item, since there is no previous item before the first, uh, it assumes that the difference there is, um, is zero. Yeah, so the, uh, the item before the first is zero. And uh, the first item itself will always just remain as whatever it was. Okay. 
Alrighty, but on to uh, on to a bit more. So the um, unary versus binary operators. This is really, I think, where um, Thrust starts to step up and become very powerful and very flexible. Um, you can perform many standard mathematical operations using Thrust Transform. So the operators are generally either unary or binary, and uh, that's uh, a reference to the number of uh, opera operands that they take. So something like um, negate uh, only takes a single operand. You know, you can you can negate the number five; it becomes negative five. Um, but other operators like multiplication and uh, bitwise and and addition and things like that, they're all binary operators. They take two uh, inputs, so you know you can add five to seven, for example. Um, Okay, so that's an important distinction because um, we actually have two different syntaxes for these. So with unary operators, you're going to have to supply a, a range, so that's the beginning and ending of uh, some vector. Uh, you also want to specify the start of an output vector, and this is where uh, memory management uh, sort of becomes important. So your output vector must have at least the, uh, the right number of items in it. Uh, Thrust is not going to allocate that for you. Uh, but after that, you supply the, your unary operator. Yeah, so each item in the range from op1.begin to op1.end is going to have the unary operator applied to it, and uh, the output's going to be placed in that output.begin. So output.begin can actually be exactly the same place as op1.begin, of course. Um, okay, so the other the other uh, sort of class of uh, transforms are these binary operators. So what we need is uh, two input vectors for a binary operator. Uh, op1.begin and op1.end is the um, range of the first operands, and op2.begin, uh, all the way up to op2.begin, you know, plus whatever that range size was, um, is going to be your second operands to your operators, and uh, then you supply your output and your binary operator. Yeah, it's easy as that, really. We'll see some examples in a minute. Here we go. Um, okay, so the unary operators, as far as I know, there's not that many of these. Uh, we've got um, thrust negate is one operator, and the other one is uh, thrust logical not. Yeah, so the two examples above perform the unary operator on all of the elements of the A vector, yeah, storing the results in another vector called B. So in this instance just here, the B vector would have at least as many items as the A vector. Yeah. Um, the negate operator just multiplies by uh, negative 1. Yeah, it flips the sign. And the logical not operator returns 1 if the input is 0, otherwise it returns 0 for all other inputs. Uh, what is this? Notice that the A iterators specify both the input and the range. Yeah, so that's... I think we've already said that. Okay, but on to the numerical operators. So there's a whole bunch of these. Uh, the numerical binary operators, plus, minus, multiplies, divides, modulus, maximum, and minimum. I think it's pretty self-explanatory what they do. You know, plus adds uh, corresponding elements from two vectors, minus subtracts the second vector from the first, uh, multiplies, obviously does what its name suggests, and same with divide and modulus. Uh, maximum is pretty interesting. That returns the largest uh, element from uh, two corresponding elements in uh, two vectors, and minimum, of course, returns the smallest. Okay, moving right along. So these are all basically the same. Yeah, just the operation that they perform is a little bit different. So these are a bunch more binary operators. We've got bitwise and logical binary operators. So the logical operators are things like equal to, not equal to, greater than, less than, um, yeah, that sort of thing. So comparative operations, I guess you might say. Um, and the bitwise operators are your standard Boolean operations. This is a bit and, bit or, and bit XOR. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, the logical and bitwise operators can be used to perform standard comparisons in Boolean algebra. Of course, you know that's what that's why they're here. Uh, the logical operators always return an 8-bit bool. Yeah, that may or may not uh, be interesting to you. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Uh, but it's set to 1 for true or 0 for false. So it's just a standard C++ bool. And uh, if the output vector itself is not a bool, then uh, that 8-bit result will be cast. Yeah, so if it's an int or something like that, you know, there's going to be a cast happening. 
Okay, so just a few little examples, I think, of the exact syntax for these binary operations just before we get onto the challenges. Uh, here's an example of uh, plus. Yeah, so a dot begin, a dot end is going to be the range of the, or the range and the uh, first elements of the plus, and b dot begin is the start of the, uh, you know, corresponding items that we're going to add to the a's uh, vector, and uh, then you supply your output. So b dot begin again. Yeah, I'm just going to override b, but um, the the operation actually will add all of the corresponding elements from a. Uh, to the elements in uh, B and store the result in B. Uh, you obviously don't need to use B twice there as uh, you know an operand and the uh, output, but I have anyway. Uh, the next one that we've got is uh, multiplies. Yeah, and I've used a float for multiplies, no particular reason, but it's exactly the same as uh, add. It's just as simple. We're just um, going to multiply corresponding elements from the A vector to the B vector and uh, store the results in the B vector. Uh, the last little example here, I've used a double for you know, no real reason, but um, this one's going to calculate the maximum. So the maximum item of uh, each corresponding pair from the A vector and the B vector. And once again, I've decided to store the result in the B vector. Yeah, so if the B vector wasn't actually double, say the B vector is an integer, then there's going to be a cast happening there. Um, okay, so I think that should be pretty easy. I mean, the, the tricky thing about these is not it's not the logic of what's happening, you know, it's just corresponding items, you're performing a multiplication or whatever. Uh, the tricky thing I think about them is just the, uh, the syntax. Yeah, the syntax. Okay, but we're going to get onto the challenges, so we'll have a bit of a practice of that syntax. Uh, I've got three challenges here, I don't know how I'll go, I think I might have gotten a bit excited with these last two, but we'll see. Um, I'll have a go at this in just a second. Um, the easy challenge in quotes, I don't know how easy it is, but um, I want you to create a host vector of 100 elements that count up in multiples of 7 starting from 21. Yeah, so you can use the thrust sequence uh, transform for that. Uh, intermediate, I want you to create a host vector of 1000 integers uh, in sequence from 0, uh, then use binary modulus to determine which elements are even, yeah, a 0, or which are odd and I want you to give me a 1 there. Uh, you might need to create and populate a second vector for that. Yeah, that's just a hint as to uh, how I'm going to do it. Uh, I'm going to make another vector. And the final one, the difficult one, is um, probably, you know, arguably is, is, is actually useful to, uh, to do and uh, it comes up a lot uh, when you're coding um, statistics software. Uh, I want you to calculate the standard deviation of a vector of 100 floats. Okay, so make a vector with 100 floats. You can populate it with random values or whatever you want. And uh, you can use reduce, which uh, we briefly looked at last time. That's going to give you the sum. Uh, you can use generate, which I don't think we've looked at at all. Uh, we might have, actually. I'm going to use generate to uh, generate my random numbers. Uh, you can use either host or device vectors. I'm going to be using a host vector because generate's easy with a host vector and uh, any operations you like. So the operations that we've been through so far today. And I'm actually going to find, it's completely irrelevant, but I'm going to find the um, standard deviations called the, populous, uh, the population standard deviation. So that's where the degrees of freedom is uh, n, or the number of items, as opposed to the sample standard deviation, where the degrees of freedom is n minus 1. Okay, but I am going to pause and get back to that in just a second, because I can hear that my dinner is cooked. See ya. Okay, uh, let's have a bit of a go at these challenges. So the first one shouldn't be too hard. Uh, I've just got a basic project here with a bit of IO stream action and uh, my host vector. Uh, create a host vector of 100 elements which counts up in multiples of 7 starting from 21. Okay, so just ignore SRAND for a moment. We'll use that, we'll use that for uh, generating things in a minute. Uh, but for us, uh, host vector uh, I guess it's an int, I didn't say, but uh, I guess it's an int, h underscore v, uh, 100 items, and trust sequence. Hello. <laughs> okay, I better include the header for that, thrust sequence. And, yay. Um, h, that's the begin, so you've got to specify your range for the sequence, and uh, dot n. Get out of here. 
I meant to put a V there. And the starting value is uh, 21. And the end is, uh, sorry, the, ki the step is 7. Yeah, so that should do the trick for the first question. Uh, the first parameter that you provide after your uh, begin and end iterators is the starting point for the sequence, and the second is the step. So the uh, second value just here, or the first value, is going to have 21, the second value is going to be 28, and uh, then 35, and so on, and so on, and so on. Okay, so that should be the answer to the first question. Let's have a look at the second. Um, create a host vector with a thousand integers in sequence from zero. Okay, well that's nice and easy from where we are at the moment. Um, we'll just change our code slightly. So h underscore v1000. And uh, with sequence, if you don't provide a start and a step, uh, the default sequences just count up from zero. So that should make our, our host vector for the first part of that question. Uh, then we're going to use binary modulus to determine which elements are even and uh, we're going to have a 0 for those, and which elements are odd, and we'll have a 1 for that. Okay, so we've got to divide the uh, elements in h underscore v by 2, and uh, take the remainder after division. So for this, I might make another host vector. Uh, I might just call it 2's, I guess. Yeah, something like that, and uh, I might use thrust fill to fill that vector. So 2's dot begin, um, twos dot end, and what do I want to fill it with? Well, I think I might fill it with two, how yeah, about that? And the final part to this question is to use the uh, transform, is to use the thrust transform with the uh, binary modulus operator, so I'll put the uh, begin and end is my uh, eight underscore v vector, that's the begin and end of the first parameter to my binary transform and the second parameter to my binary transform. This is the numbers that we're actually dividing by uh, in the twos vector. And I might actually save the results to the h underscore v vector. And the final part is to supply the uh, actual operator. So it's going to be uh, modulus. I'm going to put in there that they are integers. Uh, there, something like that should do the trick. I might just print that out actually. For int i equals zero. Well, i well, oh, who cares? <laughs> so that's actually going to set um, every second value in uh, h underscore v to uh, one. Yeah, so it'll go zero one zero one zero one zero one. Yeah, so that's kind of what I meant by this uh, second question here. Um, okay, so the final question. Now this I've included this because um, I want to show that we can actually already um, calculate, uh, you know, seriously useful things. So the standard deviation is used all over the place in um, stats. Uh, so let's have a go at calculating it. Um, okay, so first of all, we need a vector of 100 floats. So I might just change this to something like that. Yeah, h underscore v. Uh, 100 floats. You can use reduce, generate, Host or device vectors. It would it would be better to do this on the device because it would be quicker. But for the example, I'll just use a host vector, and uh, any operations you like. Um, okay, so I'm actually going to be using. Let me just go over here to Wikipedia. Um, I'm going to be using this formula here. Yeah, that's what we're doing. So if you want to have a bit of a read up on what it is I'm trying to do, uh, this is it just here. Uh, but anyway, let's just get, let's just get on with it. The first thing that I might do is um, just just for a a bit of fun. Uh, I might use a generate function to uh, make some random values. So this would be return rand mod 100 minus 50. Okay, so you wouldn't have to do this. I mean, uh, you might actually have a, a data set already, but thrust and generate. Uh, the start is h underscore v dot begin, and the end is h underscore v dot end. Uh, so you'll find when you're using thrust, you basically just have these h, or these begin and end um, iterators absolutely everywhere. Uh, but the generator that we're going to be using is my rand. And I can never remember if you've got uh, brackets there or not on the uh, call to my rand. I think you don't, so we'll just leave it like that. Like that's got to be a, a function pointer of some sort. Okay, so that should 
uh, in theory, I hope, uh, generate 100 random floats in the range from about negative 50 to 50. And the next thing that we've got to do is um, calculate the mean. Okay, so to calculate the mean, the first thing that we need to do is um, a reduce, a sum reduction. So reduce and h underscore v dot begin and h underscore v dot end. Uh, yes, and we don't we don't supply any operator. Okay, so if reduce doesn't have any extra parameters, it's going to assume it's a sum reduction. So I might store that in yeah a host um, float called sum, and from that we can calculate the mean. So the mean is going to be sum divided by however many items there are in the host vector, which is uh, size. I might just cast that. Capital F war. Okay, there we go. So now we've got the mean. Um, what we need to do is uh, make another vector full of those means. Um, because in a moment, for that formula that we just looked at, uh, we actually have to subtract the items in H underscore V from the mean. So uh, to do that subtraction with thrust, we're going to need another vector um, full of those means. Um, okay, so I might make another host vector. Uh, it's going to be a float and it's going to have a hundred. Whoops. Something like that, but I'll call it means, I suppose. Yeah. Um, thrust fill um, means dot begin. So we want to copy mean or this this float just here to all of the items in uh, means. And end and the value is mean. Okay, so that'll do that for us. And the next thing that we've got to do is subtract each item in H underscore V from those means. Uh, then we've got to square it. So, well, we'll take it one step at a time. So thrust, uh, transform, subtract is a binary operator, or minus, I mean, more than anything. And the range is from that dot begin all the way to H underscore V dot end. And the other operand for the subtraction is going to be means. Yeah, the corresponding items in uh, in means, and I might store the result in uh, the h underscore v vector. And uh, IntelliSense seems to have died, but we're going to have to supply uh, an operation. So minus and f floats. Yeah, so that should do the trick for that. Um, yeah, that's going to subtract each of the items in H underscore V from the mean. The next thing that we want to do is uh, square each of those errors. So that's called the error just there, the difference from each item in a list from its uh, from the list's mean. Uh, but the, the square is uh, pretty much the same operation, except um, that means isn't involved anymore. We're just uh, multiplying the items in H underscore V by themselves. Multiples multiplies. Okay, there we go. So once we've actually got the uh, the square of the errors, we can sum that. Which I might just use this line here again since it's exactly the same. So we sum up all of those squares and the next thing that we've got to do is divide that by the number of items again. So I might call this no, we'll just call it sum still. So sum equals sum divided by um, the number of items that we've got. Yeah. So if you're doing the um, sample standard deviation, then you do the sub one there. But we're not. We're doing the um, population one. Anyway, who cares? The final thing that we've got to do is uh, take the square root of that. So uh, float std dev equals the square root of that. And we might just see out that for no real reason, but um, standard deviation is an std dev. Um, okay, so fingers crossed, and let's see how we go. Let's see how we go. So like I said before, that would have been better if we'd used a device vector. I mean, if this was you know, a larger list, um, it's much, much faster to use a device vector. Uh, usually only if you can keep your items on the device. You, know, you don't want to be copying backwards and forwards. But standard deviation is 29.041. Uh, sounds good to me. 
Okay, so that's about all I wanted to say on the basic transforms. Things actually get a lot more interesting when you um, come to define your own transforms. It's really, really flexible, but the syntax is pretty hairy, so uh, I've left it out of this shoot. And uh, I hope that was useful, particularly that last example. We can already, just using basic um, basic transforms, we can already calculate some you know, seriously useful and uh, powerful things. Anyway, thanks for watching. See ya.